Shock, happy Sunday and welcome to today's episode of our Sunday show. Now, as you know, we've just had the Notting Hill Carnival. It is, of course, a very festive time of year. And in the month of August, we are trying our best to make the most of the nice, sunny British weather. So today's Sunday show episode is actually a very special one because in our first segment today, we have an individual who I personally, hand on heart, have to say is one of the most inspiring British Bangladeshis to have ever existed. He's none other than the chairman of the channel that we're on, the channel that we love. Channel S, but he's a gentleman who wears very many hats. He's a serial entrepreneur, he's a Bengali language media mogul, community worker, and uh, if we just even study his name, Ahmed Samad Jodhri JP, you'll see that on the end of his name there's that JP, so that tells us more about his character as well. So let's just mention a few things that he's known for. So he's a fellow at the Chartered Management Institute. He's a fellow at the Institute of Sales and Marketing Management. He's a fellow at the Institute of Hospitality. He's worked as a chief advisor at the British Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So he's also founded the uh, Potrika Bengali newspaper, among many, many other things. I'm sure we'll find out a lot more gems about his life and uh, the, the family that he has been uh, brought up in as well is very notable. So it gives me a great deal of pleasure to mention uh, that we've got our chairman of Channel S in our first segment today. So welcome to Ahmed Asamad Chaudhry JP. It's delightful Salam to have alaikum. you on our Sunday show. Welcome, Salam. So firstly, if we start with the fact that you are, of course, a JP as we started off with, um, what does that actually mean? It means justice of peace. I was appointed in 1991 in Bristol uh, because I le uh, lived in the uh, Bath and Bristol area around 47 years there. So I used to come to London as well. I had my second home. As you know, I have been involved with media. So I used to come and stay a couple of days a week. And then eventually, after selling all my businesses, restaurant businesses, uh, moved to London. But my community work uh, is still there in Bristol area. So I quite frequently go there. Um, uh, you may probably know that I founded Bangladesh House, Bangladesh Center by, um, you know, with my own collateral obtaining mortgage and then uh, the Shah Jalal Jame Mosque. And at the moment, we are going to expand the mosque. So I have got frequent journeys to Bristol very huge uh, humanitarian uh, ventures. So when you were younger, what was it that you wanted to be when you grew up? I, the social work, meaning helping people, it's in our blood. Every member of our family is doing the same. My father was a renowned uh, social worker in Bangladesh. Um, so eventually me and my brother, uh, my deceased brother, Mahmoud Usama Chaudhry MP, who died of COVID, as you know, in 2021. Um, we came to England in 1972 uh, for uh, further education. And then after that, we decided to get involved with business. And eventually, we decided that uh, one of us would go to Bangladesh and then uh, start business and charity-related work there. Thus, my brother went and I when I would go, he would come back to England. Initially, it started like that, but eventually uh, it didn't work like that. He stayed there. And I go, you know, I've been going every sort of couple of times a year, but now more frequently after my brother's death. Your brother, of course, achieved great heights in Bangladesh, uh, yes. becoming an MP, and through yes. his legacy, I'm sure you'll <clears> be able to carry that on further in this country and beyond. But if we go back to what you were saying about the fact that you came to this country in the 70s, life was very different back very then. Very different. It must have been very tough to set up all these successful businesses that you eventually yeah. managed well, to lead on. First of all, if you, um, you know, to get halal food, we had to go to Birmingham or London. So imagine how difficult it was. And then you would get, um, in restaurants, you would get fresh chickens, you know, live. And you would, you know, the owners would keep them in their storeroom in a box and then, you know, eat uh, <laughs> as they needed. So that's how it started. And then the community was small and the, the uh, community was 
uh, one of the first arrived community in this country. So imagine the difficulties the community faced. I hear yeah. from a lot of people who grew up in the 70s in this country, they experienced things like racism. Is that something that you were perhaps feeling at the time? Uh, yes and no. It happened mostly in bigger cities, but places like Bath and Bristol, it wasn't that bad. Um, so, but um, we decided to sort of help the community integrate and got a lot of help from the local authorities. And eventually we decided, as I said, I founded a couple of community center, one for general public, one for women and youth, and eventually the mosque. And um, so that's how we started, we integrated. And <clears throat> so majority of the people were involved with catering trade, but now we are di diversifying in our Younger so coming generation. on to that, there are, mm. of course, many things that you have been involved with, whether that be the uh, charity work through mosque initiatives. Um, you've obviously been very much involved with the Bangladesh Centre, but that's a world away from the media. It's one yes. thing to be a very successful yes. businessman. How did you then venture into okay. the media? When I was in Bangladesh, class eight, so imagine I was only a teenager. My dream was to start a newspaper. I didn't know how. And um, eventually... After com coming back to England, and when I was leading the community in Bristol, we started a magazine, uh, magazine type of publication called uh, Dorpon. And then um, eventually uh, I got involved with Desh Bharta, one of the first Bengali newspapers in this country. I bought that. But um, uh, the printers were in house, so it was a news print, if you see what I mean. And papers were thicker than normal, and it didn't, it wasn't doing very well. Then I decided to uh, start something different, and um, I uh, started Potrika. Potrika, the Bengali newspaper, famous, the first, yes. first broadsheet, first color newspaper from London. And I used to travel to London Every that's amazing. So that's, of course, one type of, uh, we could say, media activity, and if we then, talk about the then, print, and then coming into broadcast. Uh, like Okay, broadcast. Uh, Bangla TV, as you know, your mom was involved, and now Channel S. So Bangla TV uh, was the first electronic media in this country. And after a few years, there were problems. There were problems, and it, it almost shut down. And then many community members persuaded me to get involved with the TV, and I became a director. And Alhamdulillah, I did what I could, and it survived at that time. But eventually, after about two years, I decided not to continue there. So I came out, I concentrated with my newspapers, businesses, and charity-related work, until in 2007, I joined Channel S as chairman. Channel S has, of course, been a very successful channel yes. and a very popular channel, especially, I must say, among my generation. It's one that we uh, like to follow religiously mm. um, because of the legacy that people like yourself are leaving behind with the work that you're doing, whether that be charitable, whether that be in the media. Your footsteps, of course, a lot of people are looking to follow. Now, if we come uh, on to your, your, your brother's topic, um, we know that he was quite inspiring. Uh, he unfortunately passed away uh, from COVID. But I've heard that there's a very special book that's going to be launched on the 1st of September. So what's the yes. context of well, context is, it's called Ridoe Mahmoud Samad, is the name of the book. And many people wrote, their, it's a memoir, you know, about him. So we launched it uh, in uh, beginning of the year in Silet. And now, on the 1st of September, 7 p.m. at London Enterprise Centre, we are going to launch the uh, in UK. And one of the ministers... Uh, Hassan Mahmoud, the Hassan Mahmoud, Mahmoud is Bangladesh. hopefully coming as chief guest. Very exciting. So it's nice that you're able to uphold your brother's uh, legacy through this book. And of yes. course, that seems to be a very uh, highly esteemed event that's coming up on the 1st of September. So what was that procedure like launching the book in your brother's memory? Well, I became very emotional after the death of my brother because we were very, very, very close he was older than me, but we were best friends. 
So I decided to do something. And then I started exploring that, um, take example on how other people did. And would you believe it, I found out that within at least Greater Silet, we had many top renowned leaders, uh, politicians, they, after their death, people didn't do anything. No books published. Then I took it as a challenge. And I stayed in Bangladesh for four months. And eventually, you know, I approached people personally to write. So eventually the prime minister, the president, and uh, his friends and colleagues, ministers, wrote uh, about him and also friends and general community members. So um, it's a good book. It's a good book because my brother has, was an example in Bangladesh. I know of no um, politicians like him with you know his caliber. He spoke very good English and um, his knowledge was vast. So and his vision and mission was development. And that's what he did in the constituency. And your father least. was quite legendary. So uh, right. needless to say, you, of course, are equally legendary yeah. like your brother. So you, of course, are a very, very successful businessman, media personality. We've said uh, some of the things, just scratch the tip of the iceberg with your successes. But I'm sure there are so many young British Bangladeshis mm -hmm. who are watching. They might want to get involved with media or business or catering or one of the many things that you've done, like charity. What sort of message would you have for our young viewers who want to get involved I would with say, any of those? I yeah. would say that uh, we, the Bangladeshis, believe in one thing, that our na native country. So, you know, to promote the country, to make it better, to make it developed. To do that, we need charity-related work, you know. So that's the first thing one has to do. Simultaneously, they must be highly educated and also they get involved with the uh, politics in this country. They must have determination. There will be a lot of obstacles, but they have to be so determined that nothing could stop them. And I'm very happy to see that our generation, we did things in a different way. And it was so difficult, as you know, it's a newly arrived community and lacking behind in everything. But now you have a base, you have a base. We have laid the foundation for the younger generation to go forward, and that's what they're doing. I'm very pleased that every angle, every area you look at, from legal profession to medicine to everything, you name it, they're doing very well. And recent A-levels and GCSEs are a uh, example. You, Definitely, that's brother. a very, very timely statement because in the mm. month of August we received the GCSE and A-level right. results and in our second segment we're going to be highlighting one of those academic successes. But my generation in particular, we are so indebted to your generation for the fact that you've paved the way and so successfully so in such difficult circumstances coming in, whether it be the 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, you, it can't have been easy for you to set up businesses from scratch, then to make them successful, to scale them, to make them internationally successful, all of which you've done in a variety of sectors. Yes. So, uh, it definitely. took about 70 years though, <laughs> because the community is between 70 and 75 years old now. So that's why the foundation is very strong for you people, the young people. So the p part of the p uh, foundation was created even before you arrived on the scene, but after you did, it yeah. was taken really to the next level. So uh, would you like to sort of sum up your message uh, for our viewers? Because unfortunately, we are going to have to wrap up on our episode today. Yeah. So what I want to say is, um, I don't know if you knew uh, that, I, you know, there are other areas I have been involved. Of course. I'm a freeman of the city of London. And also recently there has been a publication type, you know, that 20 uh, people from Silet around the world who took, uh, you know, Bangladesh and Silet forward, and I'm one of them. So, uh, you know, um, I feel good, and I think the younger generation should be inspired as well because they can achieve whatever they like, you know, whatever they want to do. So. My message is uh, be determined and help others and be educated, disciplined, 
and work for your uh, roots, I would say. Definitely. The fact that we're British Bangladeshi and the fact that we have such amazing role models is something that we cannot forget. Thank you so much, uh, Ahmed Samad to 3 jp for your precious time today, especially coming on Channel S and seeing you from when I was very small. It's really <laughs> been an honour to interview you today. Thank you.